the panel that just ended was about the new blood. The one that is about to start will be about how to refresh existing one. How corporates can enable entrepreneurs in residence, how they can at all manage such initiatives, and at the very end, how they can accelerate innovation within corporates itself. Those are, let's say, three topics that can uh, or that should be answered uh, during the third panel. And I would like to invite my dear friend Nikhil Agarwal. He's a senior advisor, Federation of Indian Chambers of Commerce and Industry, India. Please, the floor is yours. Then I would like to invite Julius Akinieni, resident entrepreneur at MIT Media Labs, United States. Yeah, we're missing the only or not. Okay, Robert Lugowski, managing partner of public agents from Poland. Welcome. Sabu Khan, our High Commissioner of Bangladesh, Chairman of Dakhzi International University of Bangladesh. Very good afternoon. I'm sure that you are all enjoying a coffee. Uh, it's always challenging to keep the attention for the audience in the afternoon session, but I'm sure uh, uh, the people who are sitting here, they will find it quite enjoyable. Because This is a pr panel where we have the most outstanding people who are coming from uh, different countries, different continents. Uh, they will share your. Uh, they will share their experience about the entrepreneurship uh, entrepreneurs in residence program, and we have actually one entrepreneur in residence who is not other than uh, the MIT University itself. He is uh, he is there, the part of the Media Lab uh, USA. Uh, he will share his experience. Then we have Mr. Uh, Sabur Khan, who is running a very successful university in uh, Bangladesh. Uh, so he will share his own experience that whether this kind of program will make sense in countries like Bangladesh and if yes, then what should be the method of doing this. Then uh, uh, we have uh, Mr. Robert Lugowski, uh, managing partner at Kobe Intelligence in Poland. Uh, Poland is a very important economy as far as the Europe is concerned. Uh, good quality education we have seen. I have attended few conferences in Poland. They were all top quality. So maybe you can share your experience about how the entrepreneurship and residence program will benefit to the university graduates, to the angels, uh, to the community as a whole. So this particular panel, uh, I'll give you a very quick introduction about. So entrepreneur in residence program to cultivate entrepreneurship, an option for accelerating corporate innovation from within. Intrapreneurship uh, is a quite an interesting way of looking at it and I have been intrapreneur myself uh, around 10 years back. I'll tell you my story that will relate to you how entrepreneurship is important. So I was uh, around 12, 13 years back I met a uh, CEO uh, which was running, which was part of uh, one of the biggest uh, groups in India around $5 billion RPG group. So one of the CEOs met me and he said, oh what's the plan? I was living in UK. Uh, what's your plan? I, uh, he said, uh, come over to India and I'll make you a CEO of a new company which I'm starting uh, in education. So I asked him that, okay, I will come and he was offering a very good salary. I said, I will come, but what is the company about? So he said, I don't know. He said, how many staff members you have? He said, nobody. Uh, and I was quite excited to be part of the $5 billion group and I said, you know, maybe I'll get a secretary, I'll get a Mercedes and I will get a uh, good office but nothing was true. So I was made sort of an uh, intrapreneur uh, within the part of the whole huge group and he said I'll pay your salary and I'll pay a salary of two staff. Now you tell me within 15 days you have to figure it out what you have to do. 
so it was an entrepreneurship journey for me it was very interesting a uh, year down the line uh, at the global conference of that company the same ceo mentioned that we have not seen some marketing campaign in, ever in my li of life and the company's life for 75 years so they really appreciate it uh, so entrepreneurship is extremely important we have seen some of the bigger companies uh, taking up that route be it google be it facebook be it uh, 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 microsoft recently the uh, particularly in the google case uh, the the founder of google has moved out and they have bought the paid ceo incidentally he is indian uh, uh, and same thing happened in microsoft uh, where they have, they bought a paid ceo uh, a professional ceo who is also another indian guy so the reason i am little bit inclined towards giving examples only where the ceos are indians sorry about that <laughs> uh, so uh, but entrepreneurship uh, these entrepreneurs are creating an huge value for the companies and for the investment um, investors stakeholders so i will straight go to the uh, questions here so, since we have only 30 minutes uh, you have read your their profile they are all outstanding people i will start with robert uh, to give little bit about Uh, the organization that you are working with and how you feel uh, entrepreneurship is important and have you an experience of inviting any entrepreneur in residence for any of the, any of the company that you are investing in and good afternoon uh, so f first of all i think it's important to understand the perspective uh, i used to work for a couple of uh, Uh, big IT corporations, starting from Microsoft, uh, uh, Xerox, uh, Hewlett Packard, and, uh, and the European one, uh, Atos. And I, I, I may say that uh, I was a kind of entrepreneur. Uh, so I did a lot of projects, uh, especially in uh, HP. There was a dedicated uh, team I was a part of, uh, doing some uh, projects that were difficult to make in typical uh, corporate uh, circumstances. Then I moved uh, from corporate uh, and established uh, my own company. I also uh, I'm a business angel investor in a couple of startups. And uh, it's important to understand that in, in Cobin Angels, we, uh, we have investors uh, from two groups. One is the, uh, the business owners, but another one are uh, people from corporation, and uh, they Uh, typically it's a top management and they, they invest their private money but also trying to learn a bit more about entrepreneurship uh, to implement in, in their companies. This is very tough uh, and uh, there are many, uh, many ways, many scenarios to uh, expose uh, corporations to, to some innovation, to, to, to startups uh, just in, in order to uh, The main problem is to change the, the, the way of people think about uh, uh, about innovation in, in, in corporation. Uh, being an entrepreneur in, in residence, I'm involved in one of the uh, biggest Polish companies in, in such a program. Uh, it's uh, one of the one of the uh, solutions uh, uh, for that. Uh, it's in my case, it's more uh, advisory role. Uh, then uh, building some uh, dedicated uh, uh, projects uh, for cooperation. They, they are trying to understand uh, how this kind of program can be run. Uh, but, uh, and, we, and we shaped uh, the, the, the framework for, for, for a program. Uh, but the main challenge is in, uh, in, in culture, in communication, and uh, in allowing the Uh, the corporate goals with, uh, uh, with the, w w w they, they want to run a couple of uh, very innovative projects and they know that it will be extremely difficult to make them internally. Uh, so the direction is that, uh, that uh, this company wants to establish a couple of uh, uh, companies, startup type of companies, uh, invite ent ent entrepreneurs, uh, give them some Uh, some resources, some uh, um, directions, but maybe not not a clear idea, but rather uh, rather direction, and and then work together with them on some uh, projects uh, in in order that both sides can benefit. It doesn't mean to that they uh, they want to buy those uh, startups. It's one of the options, but uh, it's rather about. Uh, 
um, trying to involve people from uh, from cooperation in order to change the the approach to uh, to innovation. So uh, this is just one of the examples. Uh, so thank you, Robert. I'll come back to you with another uh, yes. story. That's a fantastic story. I'll come to Mr. Sabur Khan. Uh, since you own a university and you own uh, several uh, companies of your own in different countries, so what's your opinion about entrepreneurship and residence program and how do you promote entrepreneurship among your own companies? Thank you very much. As uh, I started my journey as an entrepreneur because after my university graduation, I don't have any experience. I just started my startup company as a Daffodil Computer. It's an IT company. I think in 1990, I hope that you will agree with me, it was a very new uh, startup because in that time the IT is a, one of the booming industries. So luckily I got a huge crowd. So I just uh, entered to the multiple discipline of the IT like hardware, software, computer assembling and a lot of other value addition also I did it in, the, in my IT business. So, uh, what happened in 2001, I did my company as the first IT public listed company and still it is the one of the very good public listed company in our uh, two stock exchange. Uh, at the same time, so when I gradually got the success of the IT company, I just developed a lot of other company. Uh, one by one until today, I developed almost 45 company, 10 company I sold it, 35 company I still run it. So these 35 company, you see the 2000. Two, I established the university, private university, and luckily uh, it is the largest uh, private university in our country, and also in last uh, 2018 QS ranking and Times Higher Education, we are the best in the 400 best private university in the Asian region. So what happened, this, uh, when I entered to the education sector, I tried to contribute to the entrepreneurial activities. So in five years back, I started the first uh, subject is called the entrepreneurship uh, which department name is department of innovation and entrepreneurship and then i started uh, to develop the lot of the ecosystem because i am trying to find out the best student those who are really very serious to become entrepreneur so i try to involve them in the business incubator and try to enter uh, them inside the university to develop some business opportunity like we just initiate every week one startup market because you, you know this uh, access to finance is nowadays is not a very important factor because finance is very easily available if I am telling to the banking sector, angel investor, venture capital company and a lot of, lot of opportunity is going on. But the problem as uh, we, we find to student, they need a lot of mentoring, they need a lot of these other compliances which they need to prepare themselves. So as a, a residential entrepreneurship uh, in education, I must say that the student always, I love to say them that they need to convince their family first. Because, you know, there's entrepreneurial activities nowadays, marketing is one of the key factor. Because the branding, marketing, knowing the client feedback. So that's why what happened, the student, those who are interested to become an entrepreneur, we always love to guide them. They should convince their peers, they should convince their friends, they should convince their family, they should convince their neighbor. Because by this way, they can easily get the attention to the client also. Because without good confidence of the client, it is impossible for develop nowadays. Because you know the competition is going on. Because to 1990 when I started my business, in that time there was no competition. Even that I, my first business, I think it was 200% profit margin. I think in 1990, in 200%, sometimes 300% profit margin, I got it. But nowadays that is, it is impossible because still I have the largest uh, computer outlet, but you see the now the profit margin is 1%, 0.5%, sometimes it is really, really very tough to make the profit. So what happened? Nowadays, marketing is an important factor and the marketing style is also diversified. You know, earlier, if you give the marketing advertisement in the newspaper or the television, that is enough. But nowadays, I think people don't like to go to the television or they don't bother about the print media. I think the digital content, digital media, this sorts of new area is already hitting to us. So that's why students, we are trying to motivate them and to educate them. They please try to get the attention of the class client and at the same time you know sometimes whenever they are producing any business idea they thought that this is the best idea but you know that if we global context if we consider maybe this idea is portugal 
they already did it. Maybe, you know, the Poland already developed this idea. So what happened now, considering this digital or internet technology, it is the student responsibility to find out that where these sorts of practices already implemented. If it is implemented, I think it will be easier for them to connect with this uh, existing company and then they can replicate it or find the, find the knowledge from that company. So this way we are trying to educate our students while they are study and because again as I already mentioned uh, only for the money is not the factor. So that's why we also develop the business incubator inside the university. And uh, you'll be uh, happy to know that uh, in our convocation we always try to give the one handbook for entrepreneurship development, a book for every graduate student. In the last two, three years, we did this practice. We give this all of our uh, convocation, graduation ceremony, some of the entrepreneurial book. Our intention is that if the at least 2% or 3% or 4% student is coming forward as an entrepreneur, that should be the, our success. So between this time, I hope that the last uh, 17 years of our educational university experience, almost 1,500 students, we successfully, they are, uh, they are promoted themselves as a very good entrepreneur. So what happened, the student always love to see the other success story because they like to know that how this alumni or how this student already gradually, they become the entrepreneur. So I, I hope that uh, these sorts of practical experience we are trying to involve in our university. Thank you, mentioning that you have promoted 1500 entrepreneurs uh, from the university and uh, maybe the next, uh, the Bangladeshi Google or Facebook will come from the university. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, coming to Julius, uh, I think the concept of entrepreneur in residence uh, were started by MIT and Stanford. Uh, so tell us your experience of, about, uh, uh, so are you, uh, are you based out of US or are you uh, based in some other labs of MIT in other parts? So how does it work? Right, actually, uh, good afternoon everyone. Uh, if I knew I would be talking about this today, I would have patented the whole idea of entrepreneur in residence. Uh, because I started the whole idea at MIT. MIT never had one before. Okay. And I came from a business background. I was running technology for uh, PepsiCo globally. And uh, I try as much as possible to supplement with most of what is already uh, mentioned instead of duplicating it. So what is it? What is an entrepreneur in residence and what do they do? Uh, entrepreneur in residence is not about academic. It's not about the schools, even though all the three of us here are from the academic sector. Uh, what is it is about bridging the academic environment in terms of uh, research and development, innovation, intellectual property, startups, all of that. When you look at that, you ask yourself, how do you take that to an entrepreneurial level? So I'll give you a specific example, which of, I hope will give you uh, a better idea. When I was at Pepsi, I brought PepsiCo into MIT as a sponsor of research and development. And in that process, we identified a lot of capabilities. So we became co-sponsor of that idea, and I pushed for the idea that we create a corporate venture fund that build a business case around this research and development and ideas. And by doing that, we actually become part of the co-developers of the, of the uh, innovation. So by the time we are done, taking it to market become an easy thing. So when you talk about first to market, we were first to market on the idea. Um, we were actually majority of taking that product to the market. So you can own the, the, the product in a sense. So uh, from an entrepreneurial point of view, you are investing in a risk that you normally will not be able to take by yourself because as big as PepsiCo is, as big as any company could be, you cannot take all the risk of R&D in-house. What you do is you partner with somebody else, but you build your own business model and fund to be able to take that to the marketplace. That's exactly what we did. Uh, coincidentally, uh, one of the ones that we actually co-sponsored uh, just won the uh, National, I mean, National Engineering Academy Award. Uh, which is Affectiva. Affectiva is a product, uh, uh, research and development that was uh, developed at MIT Media Lab. It was focused on autism as a, as a solution for neural system reading and then be able to express your emotions. When I saw it, I started questioning, well, if I can read emotions, why couldn't I use that to reach your emotional tie to a product? 
So, you know, in the sense that if you want to buy PepsiCo drinks, you may have five different ones. How do I know the best one to, uh, that I want to buy? Usually, we spend tons and tons of uh, product testing and so on. But if you use this technology, 90% of the time, you are accurate on what people want to buy, as opposed to what they said they would buy, which they never bought. So, uh, those are the examples. And that particular product, Affectiva, is now a, a startup. Uh, PepsiCo is one of the big investors in it. And uh, they were one of the ones to take it to market. And it has become a very, very successful product in the marketplace in terms of product differentiation. So when you see, I think most recently, you see performance of Pepsi versus Coke or whatever it may be, these are the innovation types that you invest in that take you to the next level. I hope that. I think thanks a lot uh, for uh, mentioning that. And, and, and uh, one more CEO, which we know, Indra Nui yes. of Pepsi, he recently left. Uh, uh, coincidentally, <laughs> I have to prove that to Indra. It actually took me a lot of time really? to convince her to, to back me up on it. But absolutely, she, she You know, uh, so the one thing is it's always difficult to convince a woman. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whether yeah, it's you or your wife. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but actually, she's very excited about that product now because she knows it's, uh, you know, because when we did the test, normally it would take, I mean, well, incrementally, the, the new product gave us uh, incrementally about 50% more efficiency than we ever had before. And okay. that translates to millions of dollars. Unfortunately, we don't have much time, so I'll very quickly ask you once again uh, one interesting question, and then we can take one or two questions from the audience if uh, our MC permits. So starting with Julius, uh, I will not ask like, what is your takeaway from Entrepreneurship Residence Program? I will ask you the question, what you want to change it if you're given an opportunity in the next five years? Ah. Um, I think what I would like to see is uh, more companies getting involved in the institutionalization of entrepreneurial in residence. And what I mean by that is, it's not enough that you just go to an institution to say, oh, well, I want to buy this or, or whatever. Because what you are trying to do in an era that we are in, in a, in an, uh, a technological era where our tomorrows are coming to us faster than we ever knew before, you want to co-create that product. You want to be the first one to market with it. So I would like to see more institutionalization, meaning you weave the entrepreneurial in residence into the fabric of your organization. And I think that would be very powerful. Fantastic. Not too many people are doing it yet. Fantastic. I think it's quite essential. Maybe at WBF level we can say uh, we will promote entrepreneurship and residence for various companies that we are coming from all across the world. Mr. Khan. What do you like to see a change uh, in next five thank years? Thank you. I think as per my experience, it's, uh, it seems to me that the entrepreneurial-minded student, if they are getting close connection with the company, you see the big company, if they visited the big company and they stay with the company, they should know the supply chain, they should know the product quality, they should know the marketing, they should know the brand value, they should know the people, so how they are maintain, maintain all of the resources. Because uh, I'm sure there's an industry academia linkage. It is a very common problem. And it's a buzzword, the academia industry. But the thing is that academia is, you see, the, if the industry is coming to the education sector, they are set up the lab. But if they are not allowing students to see the real effect, real effect of their product, then a lot of cases students are not getting the real pulse, the how they should develop themselves. So as I understood, this is a Cisco 2K1 initiative that they are uh, doing a one uh, entrepreneurship residence program for six months. So they already committed that they inviting the student and they will give them the facility to develop the product, seeing the Cisco's lot of product. And at the same time, I know that the, the San Francisco, uh, there's a, the, the state government is also took a one initiative for talking with the industry and also giving the opportunity of the student to work with the industry directly. So it's my understanding and also I'm also working from my university, I'm inviting the industry, successful industrialist and I'm already trying to bring the bridging with the student. So I always requested them, please invite some few students to visit, only not few hours. You need to give them the more times to visit, to talk and to uh, put their idea because sometimes the student have a lot of innovative idea. 
you know there's a millennium people and a millennium student they have a the lot of innovative ideas especially the technology because nowadays without technology it is impossible to compete in the market so that's why what happened maybe the big company they are not still as capable to utilize the proper technology so the young student if they can uh, easily match and they can find the opportunity to work closely maybe one month maybe 15 days maybe two months inside the industry then i'm quite sure there's an entrepreneurial mind that's very nice so we need to make it sort of compulsory if like chancellors like you who can take the responsibility that every student from university has to spend not as industrial training but entrepreneur in residence i think we need to change little bit of curriculum and we can see a significant difference coming in robert to you i will answer in a very short uh, way i agree with my professors uh, and i believe that it's like in a business it's uh, the success uh, is uh, a multiple of uh, how many tries we can uh, ha we can take and uh, uh, how much uh, what is the excellence in execution yeah so number of tries comes from education the more people will, will know and understand that this is good model for them um, the, the, the more tries we will have and the execution when you do it you know once uh, again uh, you get improved you, you have more experience and this which just happened yeah okay thank, thank you very much uh, maybe we have a time for one question if somebody wants to make a comment or a question all right all clear that means thank you very much and hope to see you in the evening <laughs>